Good morning, this is uh, Bob Parker. My name is Bob Parker. I'm a LMU grad, graduated in 1989. Um, and uh, I have a couple concepts in, in the seminar that I'd like to walk you guys through today. I think these things are important people, important concepts as you guys start to um, think about your careers and think about money in the future. Uh, I was a finance major at NET at uh, at LMU and uh, I wound up and got my MBA at Santa Clara subsequently. Um, so let me walk you through an agenda here. It's only five or six slides. So I'm not gonna slide you to death. Um, we're gonna talk about evaluating your job offer, what a compensation package may look like, including employee stock purchase plans, restricted stock units, um, non-qualified or incentive stock options. These are rare and mostly in startups mostly high tech. Um, and then at the very end, I'll talk a little bit about how to read your paycheck. So uh, your initial offer, when you get out of college, um, you may find yourself in a situation where the company is going to offer you a couple of combinations of how to compensate you. And you should think about these things as compensation, right? You're gonna get a base salary. This is what you're gonna get paid every two weeks. You might be offered a bonus that is expressed in either a dollar amount or a percentage of your gross base pay. And that will be tied to a series of goals or initiatives uh, that you'll have to complete. Um, and then um, wealth creation um, and the idea of stock options, you may be offered to participate in a company ownership through the use of either restricted stock units or ISO non-qual options. And the difference there is RSUs are usually in publicly traded companies and ISOs and non-quals are usually in privately held companies. The other thing is um, you're gonna be offered, I'm gonna encourage you to participate in is any 401k or IRA plan. Um, if you're working, um, and I think one of my other colleagues will go into the values of an IRA, but I'll touch on it briefly here. Um, your 401k is free money. This is a way of taking um, a, uh, your, some of your gross income and putting it away tax-free until you retire. And it actually grows at a tax-free rate. So there's no taxes as that grows. You're limited to how much you can put into that account based on your age. Um, and a lot of companies have matching programs, which are, is again, free money. So this was a, a, res, a response in the 80s when pension programs and the automobile industry and the tech industry uh, started to eliminate pensions. They brought in this concept of 401ks or privately held IRAs. Um, so there's free money to be uh, found here. And I've, I've told my own kids and I'll tell all the other college kids I've ever um, worked with that um, this is free money. And if you can put some of your gross earnings away, um, you don't get taxed on it and it grows over time. Most companies will allow you on a pre-tax basis to deduct some percentage of your salary to your 401k. Your gross income naturally drops and that means you pay less tax to the government, but you keep that money. You put it in a tax-free um, investment vehicle. It's usually a number of mutual funds you can choose from. And like I mentioned earlier, it accrues interest over time tax-free. You only get taxed when you take the money out and that's when you're ready to retire. Some companies will also match your contributions, you know, anywhere usual one to 5%. So if you put 1% of your $10,000 a month salary in there, they'll put, you know, one or 2% on top of that, um, which is an, again, free money. And this is money you should take advantage of. And a 401k program, much like stock options in my mind, are the kinds of things that you invest in and forget about. Cause you'll wake up in 20 or 25 years from now and there'll be a substantial amount of money sitting there ready for your retirement. Um, ESPP is another option that a lot of companies will provide you. This again is free money, free money. Um, you have the right to buy, not all companies do this. Tech companies certainly do it. A lot of other industrial companies do it. You'll have the, the right to buy the company's stock at roughly and, and the current sort of customary amount is 85% of fair market value. 
So if the stock is trading at 100, you can buy it at $85. <clears throat> and what they do is they do a paycheck deduction twice a year and they accrue a balance of money based on how much you wanna buy and it is capped. And at the end of it, you may have $5,000 and the stock may be trading at a dollar each. And with that, they'll buy 50,000 shares of stock for you, but they'll buy it at 85% of, of 100. So instantly you are making a 15% return if you sell your shares, then you'll be subject to short-term ordinary income. But if you hold those shares for a year after you purchase them, they become capital gains, which is much less tax. Um, again, this is free money. Now, just for giggles, I included in here in my last bullet, if you really thought about it, the concept of a same-day cash sale where you bought and sold the stock on the same day. And plenty of people that do this, they just deal with the tax implications where literally they buy that 50,000 shares of stock um, for, a, for basically 85 cents. And then they turn around and sell it for whatever it's selling at at that point. Um, the IRR in that is enormous. Just think about it instantaneously, you've created money out of nothing but there are tax implications to doing that. So um, to the extent you don't need that money, I would suggest you hold on to those, buy those options and hold on to them for a year if you feel bullish about the company. If you think the company's going in the wrong direction, then I wouldn't do that. And that's why it's an option. It gives you the option to do what you'd like to do. Now, as companies grow and they leave the private sector and enter the public sector, there's another free set of money that is available. And these are called restricted stock units or affectionately known as RSUs. Some companies, not all, will give you the what amounts to be free shares when you start. They'll say, Mary Jones, $5,000 a month, a 10% bonus, and 5,000 shares of RSUs in the company. Those will normally vest over four years. So they want you to commit and stay with the company. And that's why they make it a four-year vesting with usually a one-year cliff. And the concept of a one-year cliff is for the first year, nothing vests. And then at your 12-month anniversary, you get 12 months of historical vesting all at once. And then for the remaining three years, it's usually monthly. So this is a way of them... Um, getting you to put some teeth in the game and commit to the company. Um, and I can tell you from uh, my own personal um, perspective, I sent two kids to LMU um, in 2010 and 2014, um, exclusively with all of the restricted stock units I had collected over the years. So that was a way of um, paying for your education. They've used for down payments, debt reduction. Um, but if you get offered that, understand what those things are. That again is free money. And then these are rare, you know, these are very rare, but you'll see sometimes these in a startup where they'll give you a option to buy at a strike price that's predetermined. And it's a economic analysis that goes through um, what the um, strike price should be, but they can say, listen, we're gonna give you 10,000 shares at 60 cents a share um, and the stock could be 20 cents a share or it could be a hundred bucks a share. Um, and they'll have the same sort of vesting cadence, which is a, a four-year vesting, one-year cliff, three years then are monthly. Um, and then you can make the decision to buy those shares. Now, the one thing you should know here, and it's not, is that, it's not stated here explicitly, is one is most companies give you 10 years to exercise those options if you remain an employee at the company. Um, but if you leave the company, you quit or you are terminated, you are still entitled to those shares, what's vested, but usually it require you to buy them within 90 days or they disappear, they vaporize, they go back to the company. So if you get non-qualified or incentive stock options and you're thinking about leaving one, compute what you have vested, and two, compute what it would take you to buy them, and three, think about whether or not you wanna buy them or you wanna let them go. And I've done both, just depending on the sentiment of the company. 
The last one I have here today is just the first example of what a simple paycheck. And what I've done is I've numbered, you know, many people are going to be a little aghast at what gets taken out of your paycheck for various sorts of um, federal and state uh, and local programs, right? But if you look here, a very simple example of a, uh, of, a, uh, of a first paycheck is your first bullet is your federal income tax. That'll be a function of whatever tax bracket you're in. That's a function of how much money you make. The government will take that from your paycheck, every single paycheck. You have to pay into Social Security. Unfortunately, you may never benefit from it given your age, but um, the federal security um, program is like a federal pension program. Um, and it basically provides fixed income to retired people who don't have enough money to actually you know, make ends meet. Medicare tax, the same thing. Medicare is something that you're eligible for at 65, which provides you um, you know, affordable health care. This is, um, again, supporting the national Medicare program that we or may not be able to participate in. We just don't know, but it's something that the government has been funding for a long time. State and local taxes, again, the state and many times local entities want their fair share of your success. So uh, they're going to take uh, state and local taxes in return for you uh, for the right to use their services, whatever they may be. Health insurance, you, very important, don't skip out on health insurance. Health insurance for a single person of your age can be free many times, if not very, very, very inexpensive. It just gets to be more expensive when you have a family and you have three or four people. Uh, every company is different. Every company structures these things different. Every company offers things different. So I suggest when you are contemplating suggesting or, or contemplating accepting a job, you spend some time with the head of HR going through what the benefits are. And that's everything from all of these kinds of retirement accounts I talked about to matching programs to what do I get for medical, dental, vision? How much do I have to pay out of my pocket per month and as a co-payment? Um, and just as an, a, an example, just to give you a perspective, an average cost of an employee, just an employee is somewhere between a thousand and fourteen hundred bucks per month in the U.S. Right. So the question is, how much of that do you pay and how much will the company pay on your behalf? I've seen everywhere from 100 percent they'll pay, which is very rare, that more likely it's an 80 20 rule. So they'll pay about 80 percent of your premium. The other 20 percent you'll pay through a paycheck deduction. Again, number six, the 401k deduction. This is a set and forget retirement account. Just set it and forget it. Don't touch it. Start early. That money will compound. Invest in the appropriate mutual funds that are offered to you. And lo and behold, when you're 50 years old, you'll open your bank account one day and there'll be something like a million dollars in there. And uh, the last number here is, is a total net pay of 74.4%. So basically in this example, it says that 25% of your gross pay is going to either state and local government, the federal government, a retirement program for people you may not participate in, your health insurance and your retirement vis-a-vis uh, -vis your 401k. That's all I have today on your paycheck. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.